Welcome to Project Panonia, a collaboration involving 11 history YouTubers all doing videos on various events in the history of the Pannonian Basin, from the Roman era all the way to Hungary's involvement in World War II. And what better way to start off this collab than with the people that created the province that gave these grasslands the name of Pannonia, the Romans. Prior to the Roman conquest of Pannonia, we don't really know much about the area or the people living in it. However, looking through archaeology and very brief mentions of the area, and Latin and Greek sources, we can gather small clues as to what happened. At the beginning of the 4th century BCE, there was a big Celtic invasion of Pannonia which coincided with the Celtic invasion of Italy. This invasion was mostly centered around going down the Danube and Drava rivers. The people that inhabited the area before the Celts were mostly the Illyrian tribe of Pannonii. When they got pushed out by the Celts, this tribe moved south settling around the Sava River. However, despite this resettlement, in the 3rd century BCE, the Pannoni eventually succumbed to a Celtic invasion by a tribe called Scordisti. During this time, Eastern Pannonia and Transylvania was mostly controlled by the Dacians, a subgroup of the Thracians, but that didn't stop the Celts migrating there as well. For the next couple of centuries, the Pannonian area underwent large Celticization, with the Dacian lands having a mixed Dacian slash Celtic culture and the Scordisci controlled Pannoni having a mixed Illyrian slash Celtic culture. However, even though the entire area was under the Celtic influence, this is not to say it was all unified. There were many bickering Celtic tribes that didn't seem to be the best of friends. Some of the most notable ones were the Boi tribal alliance, who were driven out of northern Italy by the Romans in 193 and settled in northern Pannonia, the Tauristi inhabiting western Pannonia, the Scordisti around the Sava river, and of course the Celtic Dacians in eastern Pannonia and Transylvania. In around 88 to 81 BCE, the Scordisti, which were struggling to keep control over the Pannoni for several decades now, were decisively defeated by a Roman general Lucius Cornelius Scipio Asiaticus. No, not that one, his great grandson. Yeah, that one. After this defeat, the Scordisti disappear, being replaced by their captives, the Pannoni. Also, starting during this time until around 45 BC, the Thracian king Burebista solidified the Dacian lands and conquered all of Pannonia east of the Danube. This Dacian pressure from the east, newly liberated Illyrian pressure from the south, and Roman pressure from the west destroyed the larger Celtic political entities that existed up until now, and the Celtic control of Pannonia became very fragmented. When exactly the basin became part of the Roman Empire is very much debated, but most likely due to the now fragmented political nature of the area, it was a gradual process done under the reign of Augustus from around 35 to 9 BCE. It was also during this time that the Dacian control of Eastern Pannonia slowly withered away as the kingdom struggled to keep together after the death of Burebista. In 11 BC, the frontier of the Roman Empire was officially set all the way to the Danube River and then two years later this new land was incorporated into the province of Illyricum. However, certain areas of this frontier weren't very loyal to the empire and the Romans didn't really have any major control in the countryside. This along with the local resentment against the Romans resulted in the Great Illyrian Revolt in 6 CE. However, this mainly involved just the Illyrians in southern Pannonia as the Celts for the north seemed to have been content with the Roman rule. When the revolt was finally subdued by Tiberius and Germanicus three years later, Illyricum was deemed to be too large to govern effectively and so it was divided up. It was also in the early 1st century that the Samarantian tribe of Via Ziges migrated into the area east of the Danube. Whether the Romans invited them to come here and act as a buffer between them and the Dacians, or they migrated on their own using the fracturing of the Dacian kingdom to their benefit, is still debated. What's also debated is the origin of the name Pannonia, but in my opinion it most likely comes from an Illyrian word which meant swampy land or wetland, which makes sense as the Pannonian basin is just a giant tributary for the Danubian river and Illyrians were the original inhabitants of this area.
Now, Roman Pannonia didn't stretch across the entire Pannonian Basin. It encompassed only the area of the basin west and south of the Danube. However, with that said, this Roman province name started to be used to refer to the entire geographical location of the basin in the medieval period, hence why we call this entire area the Pannonian Basin or Plain today. When it came to administrative matters, Pannonia actually underwent several changes throughout the Roman period. First being the province of Pannonia, then dividing into two Pannonias, then into four, then back into one, etc. However, I'm going to be mostly skipping over these divisions, referring to Pannonia as a whole. So from the year 9 at the end of the Illyrian Revolt, Pannonia was finally firmly under Roman control and it will stay like this until the 5th century. To put this into perspective, Romans controlled Pannonia for longer than USA has been a country plus about 200 years more. With this much time of Roman rule in the area, it is undeniable that they left their mark on these lands. The first major change that came with the Romans was the creation of cities. Yes, there were population establishments like Celtic Oppidums before the Roman arrival, but the majority of these were more of a fortified village rather than an actual city. However, as Roman colonists arrived, combined with the slow Latinization of the native population, Pannonia gradually became more urbanized. This urbanization was also helped in part by the creation of the Roman road network, which the Romans built mainly for an ease of supply to the legions stationed in Pannonia. Along with building up these major roads and cities, three of which are capital cities today, the Romans also did some engineering work on the Danube. This is because some parts of the Danube back then were very treacherous for boats and sailing on it could be very costly for supply fleets. But the Romans remedied this, making the river much more safer to sail on and also established the first known Danubian fleet stationed in Carnuntum. This fleet was used to not only supply the cities along the river, but also to protect the border, as Danube was the border. The Romans also brought winemaking to the region, established numerous bathhouses, and overall brought drastic economic development to the area. When it came to legions stationed in Pannonia, the amount and type of legions changed over time, but from the Hadrian era all the way to late antiquity, there were roughly six main ones. The 10th legion Gemina, stationed in Vindobona, today's Vienna. The 14th legion Gemina, stationed in Carnuntum, today's Petronel Carnuntum. The 1st legion Adiutrix, stationed in Brigetio, today's Comarum. The 2nd legion Adiutrix, stationed in Aquincum, today's Budapest. The 4th legion Flavia, stationed in Singidunum, today's Belgrade, and lastly the 7th legion Claudia stationed in Viminacium. As you may have noticed, the area between Budapest and Belgrade had a very large empty border without any legions protecting it. This was mainly due to the very ineffective way that legions were assigned to various Roman provinces, but since it's very boring to talk about bureaucracy, we can just conclude that the Romans made a mistake. Due to this mistake, however, the 2nd and 4th legion had to protect a much larger border than for example the 10th, 14th and 1st legions. This resulted in the fact that the 2nd legion was by far the most active legion in Pannonia having to go on many expeditionary campaigns within and outside of the Roman borders to secure peace in the region. While this was happening, the 4th legion was always transferred to Budapest to protect from any rear attacks. This high activity of the 2nd legion in Pannonia along with the fact that it was stationed in today's Budapest were some of the reasons why we decided to go with the symbol of the 2nd legion, the Pegasus, for our project Pannonia. Collab. The relative peace that was had by the Romans in Pannonia was broken in 85. This was because at this point the Dacian Kingdom, which was fragmented ever since the death of Burebista, finally united again and started to hold raiding expeditions across the Danube. Most of these weren't held in Pannonia but in Moesia more south, however Pannonian legions did play a vital role in this conflict. The Romans eventually brokered a peace with the Dacians, but Romans being Romans, knowing this won't last, started to build up many auxiliary fortifications along the Danube, getting ready for the eventual second war with the Dacians. This war came in 101, ending with the Roman victory in 102, but peace didn't last as the Third Dacian War started in 105 with the Romans again winning in 106, but this time they made sure there won't be a Fourth Dacian War. They subdued the entire area and incorporated it into the Roman Empire as a new province. The Iazigas during this time were doing a bit of flip-flopping with their alliances between the Dacians and Romans, however in the end these wars resulted in a much more direct control by the Romans over them, becoming a client state between 117 and 123. <laughs> 
From there, for about 50 plus years, Pannonians lived in relative peace, making wine, bathing, socializing, trading, and whatever else the Romans did. However, this all came to an end during the outbreak of the Marcomannic Wars in 162. These wars were the first signs of large-scale migrations happening outside of the Roman borders, and many tribes that were already living near the Roman border had nowhere to go but across that border. And so Pannonia got invaded first by Germanic tribes from the north and then by the Iazigas from the east. However, these invasions managed to be repelled by the Romans, after which the Romans launched a counterattack against the Iazigas, all while yet another Germanic army crossed from the north, devastating Vienna and marching all the way south to northern Italy before being defeated. After this, the Romans undertook a large-scale offensive north, which proved successful, and the Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius even considered creating buffer provinces north of Pannonia to protect from any other future attacks, but this did not happen as he died in 180 and his successor Commodus didn't follow through on these victories. Commodus however did set out on another campaign against the Iazigas, scoring a quick victory. At this point it is safe to say that the Iazigas were firmly under Roman control, however what kind of control this was is unknown. This combined with frequent small rebellions and wars by the Iazigas throughout the next century or so means that even though they surely were controlled by the Romans, the area east of the Danube was never fully incorporated into the empire as for example Dacia was. However, one argument against this could be the fact that the construction of the Devil's Dyke started around the later half of the second century, probably used as part of the Roman limes. Hence, we can conclude the Romans did consider this area as part of their empire, even with all the frequent Iazigas rebellions. After the Marcomannic Wars, the Pannonian area became settled by a lot of Germanic people that were either allowed to settle here or used the confusion of the wars to cross the border or even wear the remnants of the defeated Germanic armies. However, as it often does, during the next couple of decades of roughly peace, these Germanic people got slowly Latinized just as the Celts had before them. The next major step in Roman Pannonian history came during the Christianization of the Roman Empire. It seems that outside of Sirmium, most of Pannonia was very much starchly pagan until Constantine came to power, after which almost comically quickly the Pannonian people, especially the higher class, converted to Christianity, with pagan burials being found increasingly rarely after early 4th century. It was also during Constantine's era that the Vandals showed up on the fringes of the Pannonian border being pushed there by the Goths. Constantine allowed the Vandals to settle on the right bank of the Danube, most likely to control the troubles on Miazigas. It was also at this point that the Devil's Dyke reached its highest extent, meaning that Romans were probably hoping to keep control of the entire Pannonian plain for a while. However, all things must come to an end, and the roughly 440 year long Roman control of Pannonia was no different. By the late Roman period, the border regions had a constant activity of intertribal wars, migrations, alliances, etc. This combined with wavering internal Roman politics meant that it was clear the Roman hold on Pannonia wasn't going to last. There were several tribes like the Vandals, Goths, etc. that attacked Pannonia in the late 4th and early 5th century, but the Romans still managed to keep hold of the area until the arrival of the Huns. It is known that the Huns controlled much of Pannonia by 437, but how and when exactly did they conquer it is unknown, but most likely starting around 420. They probably did it the same way the Romans conquered Pannonia well over 400 years earlier. It was a gradual take taking of control by the Huns with interspersed Roman expeditions trying to hold on to whatever they could. It is also interesting to learn that the area of especially southern Pannonia and Moesia was given back and forth between the western and eastern Roman empires as both sides clearly didn't want to deal with the Hunnic raids. The official Roman control of Pannonia is dated to be until 447 when the eastern Roman empire finally gave up the claims to the Pannonian lands but as we discussed the Romans didn't really controlled the area for decades at this point. That is where I will conclude my video about Roman Pannonia because it's time for Epimetheus to take the torch and talk about the Huns. Also check out the last video in the Project Pannonia collab done by Historiograph who's talking about the Hungarian involvement in World War II. If you liked my video please consider subscribing and stick around for history.